So um, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Liam Collins and I'm the principal at Alexandra. And it seems a very odd year, to say the least. And it's a very odd year for me because I've just not had the um, opportunity to meet you as a, as a group of parents. And of course, for year seven, um, not only was their year six um, taken away from them in some ways and those end of school year opportunities that they would have normally had, um, but also the transition things that we would have done as a school uh, were also taken away. I know that Mr. Birchall and Mr. Sully were desperately trying to organise um, activities and events leading up to Christmas to try and make the students feel a bit more as part of the school and a bit more as a team and a group. And all of that was taken away from us. Um, so I can only apologise that that has been your, um, your way into the school thus far. Um, I can tell you that we will go back over these things over time and we will do different events with them um, as soon as we have the ability uh, to open up a bit, as soon as we have the opportunity to organise a trip, anything along those lines, we will be looking at year seven um, to give them that ability to come together as a, as a group. Um, if you don't know, I spend approximately half my time at the Helenswood campus and half my time at the William Parker campus. I have to say I've got to know lots of your um, children well. Um, it's a joy to be out at lunch duty with them. Just watching them play and interact with each other is, is a lovely experience. Um, but I just thought I'd quickly run through uh, where we've got to and where we're up to at this point. Um, then I'm going to hand you over to a couple of colleagues. Uh, Mr Connor, as you know, is the vice principal who is uh, in charge of the uh, Helenswood campus, will talk us through remote learning and what we're trying to do. Then Mr Scaife, who oversees um, the behaviour and attitudes um, in the, of the students, will talk about safeguarding and keeping yourself safe online. And then we'll open it up to some questions, as I said. Um, questions you want to put your hands up that you think are general and you think pe other people could get something out of it. And if it's a question that's individually about um, your child, then you might want to ask that in the chat room and we'll get back to you later on. So, of course, um, we were running up to Christmas um, and then um, numerous bubbles burst in that last couple of weeks. So we had... Um, in the last week of term, we only had year 10 in school with every other year group self-isolating. And in that last week, we were told by the government that we would be setting up a testing system in the new year, um, which was a little bit outside um, our comfort zone. As educators, we had not set up a medical testing centre before and we were given the last day of term uh, to help us plan for that um, situation. I made the point at that point to send out a message saying I wasn't sure how we were going to return, but I would contact you over Christmas. Um, and we reached all the way to the 30th of December before I sent another message out to parents as um, expressing how I thought we would return back to school. Now, of course, I did it on the 30th from my point of view, as I felt it was impolite to send something on New Year's Eve, considering how our Christmases have been um, self-isolating anyway. But then the government uh, took over with their announcement. And so on New Year's Eve, I met with colleagues from the ARC Trust. Uh, I met with head teachers from across the trust. And then I met with my own senior leadership team um, on New Year's Eve to plan how we were going to approach that return to school. So unfortunately, I had to send another message out to you on the 31st of December. Uh, and again, I can only apologise that you had two messages in two days. Um, and then we returned uh, and we came back into school uh, and we were here on the 4th um, taking receipt of our testing kits. And then we had another announcement which told us that we were going to go into a full national lockdown and the school was going to uh, become a remote learning operator and having a community school in school. So. You can tell that's a huge amount of change that we've gone through in a very short amount of time. Um, the staff clearly used their time that we gave them at the start of the year to plan remote lessons, because uh, from my point of view, I have been amazed at how quickly they've adapted to teaching online. Of course, it's an incredibly different situation. Um, it's a bit like now I'm staring at a screen that is full of um, dots uh, with people's initials in. I can't tell how you're reacting. I can't tell what you're thinking. I can't tell if you're looking confused or not understanding what we're saying. 
it's quite a hard way to express yourself because obviously in normal situations you're feeding back off a classroom of, of young people and you're getting an idea of whether they understand it or not. Um, through that we're learning um, and as you're aware we took the feedback from parents last week uh, in regards to making the lesson slightly shorter so that students could take a break every hour from their devices. And I hope that you've seen that today and your um, children have taken the opportunity to just get away from the device for 15 minutes um, each hour so that they are um, not staring at this screen all the way through. Um, we've also had lots of parents have asked us about um, getting more interaction um, happening between the students and that's something we're really looking into via the new uh, breakout rooms. Um, the teams used to have breakout rooms but they weren't as controllable as they are now and I've got a number of members of staff who are trialling it out and then they're going to come back to us. But just to let you know, in the background what's happening is teachers are trying different things and then things that are working they are telling us all and we've got a remote learning newsletter now that goes out to staff with things that they might, might want to try, uh, different ways of approaching uh, assessment within the classroom, different ways of approaching how students, whether students are getting it or not getting it, nice little ways of doing quick assessments at the end of a lesson to see whether the students have learned what the, what the purpose of the lesson was and ultimately um, how to do uh, for our year 11s and year 13s full mock exams while they're not in school. So there's lots of things that we're learning uh, as we're going along. Um, but I have to say, as I said, um, the um, quick change around with my colleagues and how quickly they've been able to adjust uh, and carry on working has been amazing. Uh, one final thing before I pass over to Mr Connor to talk about remote learning is that um, we uh, have been trialling over the last week, and I'm sure you're aware, a texting system so if a, a child hasn't um, logged on to a lesson, then we send a text message out. We do realise that for the teacher that was quite difficult because they had their teams open and they were also having to open the re registration system. And when you've got your participants open, you can't see the chat room. So we noted that some um, people weren't getting registered correctly and therefore a message would go out to you. Um, but just to make you aware, I know that was a bit of an annoyance, um, but the system was set up more than anything else to make sure our most vulnerable students were contacted, that our most vulnerable students were online and learning. Um, and so that we constantly knew who wasn't in and who was in a, in a classroom. So I recognise that for everybody that wasn't the most successful system that we had. But I do want you to know that we did it for um, the best of those most vulnerable children. Um, on the flip side of that, we've now managed to hand out um, over 350 devices and we've still got more devices to, to go out. And again, just for your own point of view, um, that's to ensure that each one of the students um, at Alexandra have their own device to do their work on. And the reason we think that's so important, that it means that they can interact in their live lessons as we go through the day. They're not having to share a device. Um, if you do have any worries about um, uh, the amount of data that you have on any systems that you have at home, please also let us know. Um, we're hopeful to get another delivery of 4G uh, Wi-Fi uh, networking so that you can log in and not um, have anything to do with your own data. So I'm going to hand us over now to Mr Connor, who's going to talk about our approach to remote learning. Thank you, Mr Connor. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Mr. Collins has said, it's uh, a completely different way of working and the teachers have worked hard to try and adapt and adjust the way they're delivering lessons to uh, meet the students. Um, we, as, as Mr. Collins alluded to there, we moved everything to online learning um, in the first week uh, and that brought about quite a few challenges in, in assessing what the students can and can't do how we present that work and how we get the work fed back to us. Um, and we're trialing lots of different methods, sharing those methods so that uh, we can improve our practice continuously. But the students will follow their normal timetable. They're probably uh, ad quite adept at it by now, but the students will follow their normal timetable, um, except the lessons will be 45 minutes now instead of an hour. So we'll start the lesson at the normal start time and the lesson will finish 15 minutes earlier. Uh, so that students can get that break and teachers can get that break throughout the day. 
they the students log in via teams as you've done this afternoon uh, and their lessons will appear in their calendar they join the meeting and the lesson will follow a similar format that they will deliver the teacher will deliver some um, exposition first they'll give the students some instruction on, on what it is they're doing uh, and then direct them to a particular task uh, for them to do it might not be that the teacher's delivering live for the full 45 minutes um, but they will direct them to, to what the work that they need to complete uh, but they will be available to answer any questions or um, feedback on the students work at various points throughout the day as well um, it, it's, it's been very strange adapting to this way of working um, and bear with us because we're, we're learning lots as we go both as students and teachers alike uh, are learning a great deal about this this method of delivery and and we know all we know so far is that it will possibly be up to half term um, we don't know any further than that we'll, we'll have to take any guidance but the, the likelihood is we'll find out at the same time that you do through uh, a government announcement um, so we'd be keen to take any feedback uh, and any suggestions that you might have either through the questions uh, in a moment or through the chat room where we'll be able to monitor your comments. I'm going to hand over now to Mr Scaife. Thank you very much Mr Connor. Uh, good afternoon everyone, I hope you're all safe and well. Um, the first thing from me is to say a massive thank you to all our families um, and to our parents and carers in particular for, for the cohort um, who, who ensure that our students and uh, your children stay in healthy habits and healthy routines. Um, as mentioned previously, we know it's really, really difficult uh, times and difficult to stay motivated and actually harness that intrinsic motivation to keep going, to keep logging in, um, to take those breaks and to, to keep our minds and our bodies nice and healthy. And, you know, thank you for ensuring that your children are, are maintaining that and sustaining that. It's really, really important that they do uh, because we know firsthand from the first lockdown um, that maintaining these healthy routines is pivotal to combating loneliness and to boredom and to the onset of mental health issues. So it's really important what you're doing. So thank you. And some really, really good news. It's paying off. The work that you're doing to cajole and to encourage and to motivate means that the engagement for for year sevens last week was over 90 percent and it's not where we want it to be it's not 100 percent um but we're on course to achieving that um so keep going well done know that we're supporting you so please do give us a call if there's any issues that you're having at home but it looks as though as a cohort you're really doing well so keep up the good work and that's from us so thank you for that in terms of um, follow, follow, following up in terms of students who don't log on, that as, you, as you've heard already, there, there's text messages that go out. If we have not seen your child log on to their online learning, we get quite concerned. We can't see them. So therefore, we need to have some method of detecting how they are, where they are, etc. Uh, so we know it can be slightly annoying, but please, once again, I'll echo what Mr. Collins has said. It's coming from a, a place of caring. It's coming from a place of actually we're trying to do our jobs to ensure that the, your children do not fall too far behind in their learning. Um, so please be aware of those text messages. And if we have made a mistake, please don't hesitate to give us a ring, give us a call, send us an email, and we'll do our very best to to um, to adjust and to, to reflect accordingly on our records what the case was and actually if it was a mistake. Uh, the structure of the school day remains the same for, for our children, so please ensure that they're logged on for their form time. Sessions and opportunities to, to speak to their form tutor remain the same and to get the same diet as they as they normally do. So please encourage them to make sure that they log in on time for their form time in particular. From a safeguarding perspective, as, as I've already alluded to, the students logging into their online lessons is our way of knowing that they are safe, that they are well. Where we do not have contact with families or with students for a period of time, we get very, very concerned. Um, and so with that, please expect people, allocated members of staff and um, colleagues of mine to be calling you um, to, to, to verify, to double check that things are okay. 
to offer any support that we, we may need to offer. Um, but, you know, again, those calls are coming from a place of care and a place from a safeguarding and child, perspe uh, child protection perspective. Um, so we do expect all students to log on systematically, regularly for their online learning. Um, it's a safeguarding criteria. We from the government have been encouraged to encourage you to ensure that your children are logging in for their remote learning. So that's what the text messages and that's what the phone calls are about. Again, I'll finish off by saying thank you. And once again, just to reinforce, if you have any issues or concerns or queries, please don't hesitate to give us a ring and we'll do our very best to resolve them for you. Thank you. Back to Mr Collins. So thank you there to, to both my colleagues in terms of a little bit more explanation. Um, this is your opportunity to ask any questions that you might have. Um, the forum or the chat room is also a good place for you to leave suggestions. Um, it's really important to us and for you to know that um, as a school, we welcome feedback. And I think uh, and that sometimes that feedback can be negative because there's things that we need to improve, but also there's feedback that can come in that's, that's, that's positive. Um, the point about it is, is I want this to be a, as tight a partnership as we can possibly maintain through your um, child's time with us at Alexandra. So that when we're celebrating their successes in year 11 and then further on into year 13, uh, we know that together we have done really well for, for those for those children. So if you do have a question to ask or some feedback to give, please raise your hand. As I said, that's just the hand icon at the top. Um, if you don't want to turn your video on, that's completely fine because we are recording. Or if not, you're welcome to use the chat room facility, which is the speech bubble at the top. Uh, I can see a question coming there from Ms Tewksbury. Hello, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. One is I'd like to know what the policy is around teachers having their cameras on when they're delivering live lessons. I find it disappointing that the majority of my, te uh, my daughter's teachers don't have their camera on when they're teaching and I think that would probably help some engagement uh, with the pupils and if they can see their teacher but I didn't know if there was a policy in place around that or if you have a standard practice across the school. If I answer that one it's entirely up to the teacher because they're teaching from home um, and so it's entirely up to the teacher whether they can operate in a room which doesn't show photos of their own children or lots of our staff are at home working with their own children and those children come in and out of the room that they're working in. So that one is entirely up to the member of staff in terms of what they feel comfortable in terms of doing. OK, thank you. I mean, obviously on Teams, there's a facility to put backgrounds on, so that would help with them at some of those situations. But I just think it would it would help engage the pupils with with the teacher while they're talking. But I understand there are different situations. And um, the other question is around um, it's a bit difficult because uh, in terms of consistency, some work is posted on show my homework. Mm -hmm. Some work is posted on the channels for each class on teams. Mm -hmm. So you have to constantly be looking on both systems to try and make sure that you've identified the work that, that needs to be done. So I think it would be useful going forward if if it's either in if it's just in one place so that you can ensure that the pupils don't miss anything. Um, I having spent this weekend discovering that my daughter hadn't put her work back into her school because they were in assignments rather than show my homework. I take that feedback completely, Ms. Tewksbury, and that's something we can look into. I'm sure that there might be some reasons why one system is better than the other one, um, but that's something that's duly noted because, um, yeah, both my daughter this weekend, who we found about eight different things in assignments that she thought she completed, um, uh, handwritten, and then I found my son had one thing that he hadn't picked up as well in assignments. So thank you for that. That's just um, uh, reminded me that we just need to look into that. But thank you for your points there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then again, apologies here. I can't see um, the first name. So is it Sorrel? Yes, MJ. Thank you. 
Um, it's just a, just a couple of um, comments just to pick up on there, Mr. Collins, if that's OK. So of course. in relation to um, I'm one of the parents that's received notification of uh, my child not being in a lesson. Yeah. Um, I after speaking with my child, I've noted that there are several different ways that the teachers are taking a register at the moment. There's a different format depending on which teacher. So, of course, everyone's logging on to, to Teams. Yeah. Um, the way the, the teachers are kind of registering whether the children are there is different depending on, on who it is. So, for example, some of them are asking for children to, just to raise their hand, as I have okay. done in Teams, yeah. which is not then logged anywhere on mm -hmm. your team system yeah. and is open to, to incorrect messages going out about attendance. Sure. Um, others are asking for um, children to comment within the chat saying, here, sir, here, miss, which is absolutely yeah. fine. It's then registered. I can then see it from my side that mm -hmm. they have actually said that they're there. And other teachers that are um, just asking um, for, to, see, uh, to speak to people if they're not there. So not, not necessarily confirming that a child is in the lesson or not. So if they all had the same approach as in yeah. putting a chat, uh, putting a message in the chat to say, yes, I'm here, sir. Yes, I'm here, miss. You'll know what, instantly within that chat whether they were late or whether they mm -hmm. have actually um, signed in or not. So that was just around that. If, um, that, that no, thank you. Um, the, the other thing that um, I have a, a little issue with is the amount of com communication we're getting at the moment. Mm -hmm. So on this particular day that one of my children was apparently not in lesson when they were, um, I yes. received 12 messages to, to discuss the matter or 12 messages on that day from the school, including the communication about the reports. It was quite a considerable amount of um, communication. I work mm -hmm. full time, as I'm sure lots of other people do. It's yeah. very difficult to not only keep on track that my children are, are logging into their lessons, yeah. but working and then trying to read through all of the messages that you're sure. sending. So really, it's just a request that if you're going to be sending out communication to parents, could we try making sure that it's maybe more limited or mm -hmm. more um, that if you're going to communicate with us that, you know, all of those messages go out as, as one as much as possible or as much as they possibly can? It is. I would say it's exactly what we're, we're looking at at this moment in time. And as, as I said, um, I am apologising to to parents about the, the the amount that are going out. It's trying to create a system that doesn't exist. If you can imagine that normally students will be in class and then a student is noticed that they're not there and therefore the systems work in the background to that. Um, that system doesn't work when we're remote learning because we're relying on teachers being able to see the participants or taking a a way of taking attendance it's different from each other teacher and therefore mistakes can be made so uh, we completely recognize at this moment in time the system is not right and it's something that we're working on this week but i we really do take your point that there are too many messages that are going out at this moment in time yeah and um, the other thing that i was just gonna gonna briefly say as well um i don't know whether any of the other parents have experienced this but i have two daughters at um arc and mm -hmm. the messages always come through saying your child has this or your child's report is here. Um, it's it's not always um, indicative of which child you're actually sure. talking about. So, for example, with this non-attendance of a lesson, mm -hmm. I received emails and text messages to say that she didn't attend. I've then um, been, I want to query it, so I've called mm -hmm. in. And, of course, yeah. the automated phone system says, do you want the Helenswood campus or the Parker campus? Yeah. I'm not going to know. One one is each. So it'd be mm -hmm. really good to be able to actually identify which child you're, yeah. you're actually speaking about if you are in communication with us. And that's not just because of COVID. That's not just because of um, the remote learning at the moment. That's a, a um, an observation that I've had for quite some time. No, again, I would say that's due to the automated element of the system that the, um, the system will pick up all the people that have a, an N mark in a registration and will send an automatic text message to all of those people. To have their name on it would mean that someone would need to sit there and check each name that was going out to each parent. So again, I do completely understand. One of the things that, um, and I apologize for that, but we will be looking at it. One of the things that I have realized is that at the moment, the school doesn't have a school-based parent app uh, and we are investigating that. So when you get reports through, um, the message will come up in the app and then you'll be taken to the place that you need to go for each child. So for my children, we use the company that uh, provides Show My Homework um, at Uplands. 
And then what happens is, is that I can see it, it will show up under each child. So a message will be under my daughter or my son. And then that's where I'll be able to find it. But um, I would agree there's some there's some um, things that we can learn from this system that will make everything better. But thank you for your feedback. Um, the next person up is, uh, um, I, I think, Ms. P is it Pilbeam? Yes, yeah, it's Leanne, yes. Hi. Hello there. Hello. Um, I think you've covered part of it in uh, talking about the registering of, of students. Um, however, I just really wanted to know about what the plans going forward are about the consistency in the mornings, um, because this morning my son had 15 minutes of his maths lesson taken over by uh, the register. And obviously with the shortening of lessons, um, that doesn't actually leave a lot of time for, for the teaching. Um, so yeah, you, you did mention there were plans going forward um, to make this more consistent. Um, any yeah. other information on that? No, uh, I mean, again, you, I would say if you think that last week was the first week um, that we've ever done 100 percent. Well, where we can, obviously, we do have members of staff who are unwell at this moment in time. Uh, but where we can, we've gone to live lessons at every single lesson. And I'm sure uh, like me, you might know parents in different schools. And I am a parent of children at different schools. And I can tell you that's not what's happening at my children's school. Um, so my children who are in year 10 and in year eight are on average getting two to three live lessons a day and the rest of it is um, worksheet based. Um, I, I will look into why it took 15 minutes to do in a register today um, and see what the issues were for that for that member of staff. Um, but obviously, I know that members of staff are trying to get themselves into a rhythm of getting this absolutely right. So um, that's not acceptable in my opinion 15 minutes for register but I will look into that and see what happened today um, but no we, it should be a few minutes to do a register at the beginning and then a, a good 45 43 minutes worth of teaching and learning going on and then a, 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 a break for our older students we are still going to the hour because we think that they need it um, but again it was just making sure after the feedback we had from the other parent uh, Q&A's last week and that came through very strongly that they wanted their children to have a, a bit more of a, a bit more time away from the screen. So I don't think we're going to get this absolutely perfect for everybody, but we will keep improving. Um, and I will look into that maths lesson. OK, thank you. I can't see any other questions at all um, coming up. Um, as I said, you're welcome to leave messages in the um, in the uh, text boxes as, as well. And again, if I could just say once again, thank you um, for um, coming to this this evening's Q and A. Uh, we will continue to do this on a reasonably regular basis while we're in lockdown. Um, so we're probably looking at just before the end of this half term. Hopefully, we'll know a little bit more what's happening. Um, please keep letting us know if, if something's not quite right. Um, and we will put it right. But I'm just going to apologise again for the text messages. Um, I can only tell you that was done for, for all the right reasons, because we do have a number of students that are extremely vulnerable um, and we want to make sure that they are there and logging in. But unfortunately, we can only create one system for the whole school. However, we are now looking at that system to see if we can stop the text messages going out to parents um, and make sure that we're checking in on the students that are the most vulnerable. Um, but thank you again for this evening uh, and I really do look forward to hopefully seeing you all towards the end of the year when we can at least meet up uh, with some of the things that we plan to do at the beginning of the year. Um, but yeah, um, stay safe everybody uh, and let's hope that we get through this nice and quickly, uh, this lockdown. Um, so thanks ever so much for your time this evening.